Welcome to the Digital Maddy Show. This is a platform where I share my knowledge on video creation, digital marketing, chatbot marketing, and how to grow your business through video making. I also invite many influencers and digital marketers on this show and ask amazing questions to extract their secrets of business. Let's get started with your host. Hi, my name is Mithil, and I am a YouTube and video creation coach, and I help aspiring video influencers to create content and monetize their content through video making. Today we have an amazing person into our show. He is already into the studio. He is the founder of Maxirus, an amazing orator, a fantastic trainer. Let's welcome him to our show. So we have our guest on the show. His name is G Devyanand. He is the founder of Maxirus. So welcome, sir, to our show. Good morning, Mathil, and thank you for having me here. It's been really wonderful. Uh, to have you, uh, you know, uh, on the show, and uh, let me see how how best we could take it forward. Yeah. Great, sir. It is uh, our pl- privilege to have you on our show, sir. So, sir, can you share your favorite quote that inspires you daily? Okay, one of my favorite, uh, several of them are there, but one of them uh, which captures my attention all the time is you have to, uh, you know, accept the pain or regret. the discipline of not doing it like what the, the way jim ron says uh, you know either you have to you know have the discipline to do it or regret for not having done uh, either of that is going to come true and uh, my belief is you might as well uh, you know uh, do the discipline uh, the five am club that robert sharma speaks about absolutely uh, that's one of my quote another quote is uh, uh, now that i've moved into training and business consulting and we work with a lot of clients uh, that Yeah, catches my attention of late is you know if you're not serving the customer, start serving someone who already is. Uh, so which means you know if you're able to enable the enabler, uh, the last mile guy, I think the organization stands to benefit. And through that, you'll also build capability for organizations. So these are two of my favorite quotes: one for myself and one for the teams. Absolutely, sir. Because either of them also creates a domino effect, and that creates a bigger impact. to the end customer so fantastic sir so uh, so can you share your back story yeah sure uh, i can be close to about 30 years of work experience you know as we speak today uh, a little more than 30 uh, you know i i call myself a, a blessed one the reason being is um, you know i have a very rare combo of having served uh, service first then moved into sales uh, so it's a very rare combination to have uh, mastered or probably learned the basics of uh, service excellence as well as sales excellence uh, i think god has been really kind to me i am a uh, i am a hotel management graduate post my graduation i started uh, i started doing my uh, post uh, hotel management course wherein uh, uh, upon campus recruitment he got uh, picked up at the uh, taj served taj for close to about 8 years have been part of taj group across the industry i mean across the country and few and this abroad as well one of my passion was also to set up hotels across the country uh, both in the middle of the country and uh, in the domestic and international shows a couple of other places that i have also opened as uh, sri lanka uh, bengaluru uh, property way back in the 90s so post which i moved uh, into timeshare because for clearing was uh, kind of enough and then i thought for oh, greener pastures move into timeshare that's when club mahindra opened up and uh, you know uh, we were one of those founder team members of club mahindra So we joined, uh, and that's where I, I I got lured into the art of sales. You know, because uh, all the while I've been selling, uh, you know, space, time, and other things, uh, exclusive champagne, lobsters, and the restaurants and stuff like that. But then, uh, time show was something different, you know, and it was an upcoming concept. And first time, from Sterling and Club Mahindra, they were new. So I thought it would not be a bad idea to, to get in there. And then that's how I got in. And said, um, I must say, it's it's a great uh, listening because. The funnel way back in the 1998 uh, used to be 25 years to one, you know. So it they had to go 25 calls to close a you know a single uh, NOP those days. So that's the kind of thing. And then uh, how to take 24 no's to to get into it. So the uh, the hardcore sales of selling an intangible probably I learned it from Club Mind. Thanks to them. Four years I served Club Mind, and then I became a founder team member for Max Life Insurance. Uh, those days it used to be called as Max Life Insurance. So uh, I joined the agency uh, at Chennai uh, as one of those founder team members. Uh, in 26 months, I moved up as a head of training, uh, you know, for South, you know, uh, so zone training head for uh, the South. Uh, 
uh, grew up offices from five offices to 77 offices uh, in four years time and then used to handle a business of about 120, 130 of course, you know, when I left agency in 2008. And I moved as, you know, as a national head for bank assurance and direct service uh, team, uh, direct service team, which is based at Gurgaon. And then two years, uh, worked with those two channels and put up both the bank assurance architecture as well as direct sales team and helping them to improve productivity. And during the time, uh, we acquired Access Account, uh, you know, which is one of those, the Marquee times, you know, that, that uh, you know, even Max uh, goes you know, strong, you know, uh, compared to in the last 10, 11 years. But after fetching the account, you know, it's been uh, very good. Post which, uh, I started this company called Maxilis Training and Consulting, uh, uh, way back in the year 2010. It's almost nine years that we've continued into the 10th year. Happy to share with you, uh, you know, the name Maxilis itself is a kind of a tongue twister or, or a conversation starter. So we said, uh, maximizing results. So we said, uh, you know, what is this maximize? How do I pronounce your company? That's all we wanted clients to ask or prospects to ask. And I think that that's how it started in the different conversations. I think thanks to the team, uh, you know, today we are about 20 odd employees across the length of the country. Plus another 20 on project to project basis, we have, uh, you know, uh, our teams uh, affiliated to us. So that makes it to about 40 odd employees. And uh, we have about 200 clients across 65 different verticals and uh, going strong and now we are getting into uh, the digital space a little more uh, passionately uh, because I think uh, going forward digital is the way forward because we believed in brick and mortar and getting to know ourselves because there was no brand when you started into those things you can't put name to face so we wanted to build it brick by brick now that we acquired uh, the 200 our clients I think uh, God has given the wings to fly now and a little more stronger and uh, that's the way forward Short question, but a little long answer. Hmm. Absolutely, but that's that's more important, sir. So yes, as you say, sir, that uh, even with COVID and everything is locked down. However, still everybody has now migrated to online, becoming digital, and they all are selling something or the other. But when it comes to selling, I think there is a process. If followed in the right way, you not only get sales once, but I think you get frequently with the same customer. So, sir, can you throw some light on what's a sales process and how it is benefited? Sure. Uh, having sold uh, Intangible for close to about uh, close to about twenty years, I would say, you know, between Club Mahindra, four years, eight years with uh, life insurance, another nine years with uh, our own company. We are also selling Intangible, uh, so to speak. You know, I can get in there, but then uh, before that, I thought I will set a prelude to this. You know, because sales and process, uh, you know, is is something that sales guys most, most of them don't. You know, but they think that only we are regimented and in sales, I say you okay, you know. It is not that only in sales it happens, but then uh, I let me take a step backward and say, you know, where all does it apply? Okay, let me talk about the industries that I, uh, one I worked in and the other one I am serving off. Uh, the one that I work for, you know, if you look at it, you know, a normal cake that you would make at home. There is a, there is, there are uh, what is called as a recipe, you know. So you have to have a first standardized recipe, you have to have the ingredients, uh, you know, which will go into a cake. Because there are several ingredients which will go into a cake and not into a kurma. And what will go into a kurma will not go into a cake. So similarly, in, in ratios and proportions, you will have, and there is a sequence to follow, right from, uh, you know, be it, uh, mixing the flour to sifting the flour and, and baking the cake at a particular temperature so to get the, you know, cake risen up well, soft, spongy, and consumable, you know, the one which will be liked by all all ages. So that's the way, you know, there is a process though the cake looks yummy and looks delicious, but there's a process that's gone in, uh, right from picking the flour, selection to 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 sifting and, and, and the temperature at which the cake is baked for a, a certain amount of time for it to get a, uh, get a process out. Similarly, you know, that's at the, at the, at the cooking level. Let's, let's look at what happens in the and the serves. Uh, so there is something called as a pre-plating, you know, which means that there is a particular plate, it's not the dinner plate, which is a large one, which is used for serving a dessert, which means there's a service standard, which is different with the process of picking up the right plate. And then if it is a cold dessert, you have to serve it in the cold plate, with a hot dessert, the hot plate, and then there has to be an accompaniment to it. There's an accompanying sauce to it. And then you pre-plate it in such a way that there is, uh, there is actually a way where, you know, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, three o'clock, and uh, you know nine o'clock so there are uh, you know like a clock your plate is cut into 
and certain portions you can occupy and certain portions you don't for i appeal uh, and also for the clients or the guests to touch upon to that extent there is so much science behind even uh, pre plated food coming and reaching your you know table you know five star hotel so just to illustrate my point in terms of everywhere there is a process be it the hospitality or it could be you know look at manufacturing there could be you know even a bulb you know that is fixed in a we work for a lot of oems and uh, for automotive sector so even for a oem you know whether it is a uh, bulb which is a night uh, bulb or it could be a the regular bulb you know you, you have 18 components that go through the various stages of which it is made and the, uh, the the density of each of the glass differs and then the the, the uh, what i call the rubber that uh, enmeshes with that then the process is close to about 112 steps for a bulb and a car to get fixed and 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 it's all sequentialized and you can't jump the order because then the end product will not be the same you know? so now uh, having stated the, the the bulb example and also the the way it is just uh, automotive or a manufacturing setup and then you have hospitality or hotel setup now let's look at sales now uh, you know sales is a, is a process it's it's a science of course for a period of time uh, time you start doing well you know on the science part it becomes an art that's why as as you catch with experience like wine it tastes better with age you start growing up in the organization you become you know a star salesman because uh, you are able to understand the you know, you know the first side of it whether you can close a sale or not so what does it mean there are generally if you look at it world over there are several steps Uh, it can range from a four step to a six step or a seven step sales process that is there right from uh, identifying who my prospect is you know who, who is he or she a prospect of mine to to find out whether i'm selling a product or a service or it's a product come service is it tangible or intangible or do i go and meet the customer or the customer comes to my shop and then starts uh, picking my item who's my customer where do i meet him how do i get in touch with him and then how do i find out what the customer want which is typically your need uh, need analysis kind of thing uh, what i call it either it could be a need or it could be feeling if it is a uh, intangible product probably you'll find out what the need is if it is a tangible product then probably you'll find the feeling you know which means uh, are they uh, you know because several brands have uh, several touch points of prices will be there so what is my customer made up of so that that's an extra step that and then move to a alternate choice close and uh, take it to a closure and by by asking the customer to to either pick and choose or select the uh, product and offer your expertise in the bargain so that's the way <coughs> sorry as i see uh, the sales process would would go about and it's important because it's scientifically designed based on the the company the product the tenor the, what the product could do there is so much science uh, which has gone inside before one decides a product and in short uh, i am of uh, a certain view whether you are selling a tangible or intangible whether you are in a b2b business or you are in a b2c business there has to be a process it could be retail it could be key account management there has to be a sales process and those organizations those employees those supervisors and managers and uh, you know as view heads who follow who believe that sales process can help me because this is this can taste You know, stand with the test of time. It is time tested. It's proven. Uh, there are no shortcuts. And uh, pre-COVID, post-COVID, uh, world wars. Uh, it has seen subprime crisis. It has seen tsunamis. Everywhere it 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 has worked, and it will work in times to come as well. So I'm a big follower, and and a strong advocate of following principles. And the first principle in sales is following a sales process. absolutely absolutely and i have seen it personally that you have followed it for so many years sir so uh, sir when it comes to uh, sales process uh, definitely oh, as you say over a period of time like how the wine it tastes bet- better uh, also the person who follows the sales process uh, enhances itself in over a period of time so along with following the sales process do you really think that upgrading your knowledge is also important in terms of self development and if yes why Sure, uh, you know this is a very important part. I you know which you are asking uh, because uh, constantly the, the customer is is learning. Okay, the market is changing. The product and services are changing. Let me go back to the example of uh, you know uh, the current uh, set of automotive cars, Tesla, uh, Tesla. 
uh, current automotive cars has about 20,000 spare parts and Tesla will come with 20 spare parts. Current automotive cars, the best western car segment in the mid range would say every 15,000 kilometer, please come 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 back and get, get your car service and go back. Uh, Tesla says go up to the moon and come back and you don't need service. So, you know, these two examples will illustrate uh, how, you know, uh, the product have evolved over a period of time. The evolution is important, the technology is important, three, the customer profiles are changing, fourth, uh, you know, service guarantees, and fifth is uh, the generation is coming into play, which is right from a Gen X to millennials. Uh, I, I was writing an article this morning, uh, I said ours will be one of those generations, it will work with five generations. Uh, considering myself as the senior most guy, you know, probably I belong to the Gen X, then, uh, you know, uh, you know the Gen Y, you know, then you saw uh, baby boomers and millennials and now uh, gig economy and 2020 guys will also come into play. So which means we will be one of those privileged ones, you know, because our grandfathers never saw five generations together. But then we will be one of those rare commodities or rare set of people who will have five economies of sets of people who are born in different time zones or different uh, time frames of Gen X to 2020 and gig economy will come into play. So, uh, so that, that's the evolution I'm talking about, which means uh, the time it took to, to identify a vaccine, you know, uh, COVID, uh, I, I reckon in probably another six months to one year's time, we should be able to. But then, to go back to the 12th century, 13th century, the plague and other things, it took about 300, 400 years to find the first, first vaccine. So, from a 400 year, the, the turnaround time has come down to six months to eight years, eight months to one year, less than one year. Hope they find it even more earlier, it will be helpful for the human beings. But uh, I guess, you know, we've come down. So, which means, there's a constant evolution of products and services that's happening. I mean, do I, as a business leader, at irrespective of whichever level, I could be a CEO, I could be a CDO, or I could be uh, the last mile guy who is actually meeting the customer. I need to look at the market uh, in close microscope because I, as I say, uh, I don't plan anything beyond three months. You know, because every third month, every 90th day, the market changes. The, like, uh, the industry changes, the customer changes, the customer preferences changes. Uh, and henceforth, we need to be very, uh, very uh, nimble-footed and, and, and say that what would work, which means constantly I have to ha have an eye. The person has to have an eye, he or she wants to be successful on, on uh, educating themselves, upgrading their own knowledge, skill sets, understanding what the client actually wants or whose client's client, why he or she is asking for what he or she is asking. Understand the intent behind the question. I think these are very critical part of a company one and the, the organization or the employee who, who reads the most who google the most uh, because say everything over google and youtube every question that you are asked with what and why has an answer uh, and if you can learn have an attitude of gratitude uh, you know thanks to the internet and uh, pick up uh, uh, and block about an hour i would written, strongly recommend about an hour of safe learning in a day even you can break it down into 30 minutes each but i would strongly suggest that we should do a 30 minute uh, you know, uh, reading, uh, uh, which will only upgrade yourself. And reading not necessarily, it has to be confined to only the uh, industry that you belong to. It can be holistic because we don't know which will become a sunrise and which will become a sunset industry. So, so uh, and henceforth, I would, I would, I would strongly recommend or probably uh, one of our collective strength, uh, you know, in our organization is also that uh, one week, uh, once a week, one Saturday. We will block ourselves to talk about a topic and present to ourselves for an hour by every employee, including me. So, which means uh, we are on the move, we are learning. In fact, in the COVID uh, in the last 25 days, we have analyzed about 65 videos, and uh, there is a constant learning that happens uh, you know, back and forth over WhatsApp and over Zoom. Uh, because uh, I don't think so, we will get a time like this forever in a lifetime. Because after school days, the first time ever. Uh, you know, we've got such a long summer holidays and it's literally summer and uh, thanks to curfew, uh, we are forced to learn, you know, and, and uh, in fact, uh, we and the team are enjoying and we have become a lot more better than what we used to be over 40 years ago. So that's why I would give a now and then example of how continuous learning helps you. Absolutely, absolutely. It's about constant upgrading yourself uh, with respect to the changing things. It's like if you don't change, you will perish. 
so absolutely right sir so uh, when it comes to as you are saying upgrading your knowledge and then you linked it to corporates so definitely corporates also has a training department which helps the employees to upgrade their knowledge depending upon the tier they belong to so uh, is there any importance of a training department in corporates which will help them to grow their business in a overall perspective my mind uh, you know in times to come especially post covid even even otherwise uh, lnd is a, is a function which will always play a uh, very critical role you know the reason i'm saying is because um, you know, well, along with hr you know you'll also have your employees of the onboarded right from our onboarding stage to help them settle down in the job and quickly uh, you know get moving them into a plug and play state helping them uh, shorten the learning curve and also helping them to stay longer in the organization i think it is a bit of lnd and uh, thereby helping employees to uh, fast track their, their uh, career progression and help build a pipeline for leadership and pipeline for for advancement is is a job that lnd does and most large corporate that we work with and i have been part of always had and packed by including the ceo and say that uh, lnd is a function that we should always cherish because people will say you know uh, uh, it's a very famous quote that that goes around uh, what if you train and uh, you know uh, and people leave isn't that a cost to the company and uh, you know isn't it too bad uh, i i remember one of our, my favorite ceo saying Uh, what if if we don't train and people stay back? That'll be even more dangerous. Uh, so you know, uh, it's a, that's a, that's a that's the outcome or that's an attitude that particular CEO has. Mm-hmm. And today, I think you know more and more people are moving towards uh, oh. that uh, understanding because co- apart from COVID, I'm saying the millennials have a shorter memory time. They have the preference of learning, so you have to give them a bite-sized micro learning module, and they like to learn at the time of convenience. It will be 2 a.m. in the morning or 11 in the night. It need not to happen between a classroom uh, nine to six and sharp with a book in front. You know they may not like to have a book at all for only there. So the learning mechanisms are changing. The learning methodology are changing, and uh, preferences are changing. So L and D uh, plays a very very critical role from three angles. One in terms of helping the new employees settle down. Two is helping them to come up the curve, and three is thereby building a culture of performance and uh, uh, performance enhancement. So fourth, uh, third point are being uh, helping them to build the skill set so that uh, you get a leadership pipeline because you know if people have come through the ranks then it's going to be better you know because people understand the culture they understand the organization and uh, it's only going to get better to my to that extent L and D in times to come will also play a pivotal role and to my mind they will they will be the uh, most critical function in times. absolutely as lnd plays a very vital role in uh, developing all the employees from the people who have just joined to the leaders and the uh, directors and the ceos so sir uh, i have seen uh, whether it is dale carnegie or jim ron or whether it is uh, brian tracy les brown they all speak about goal setting and uh, even in trainings uh, more or less usually we uh, begin the training with goal setting whether it is your sales whether it is anything related to that so sir uh, can you share quick tips on goal setting which are actually result oriented and give result to all the viewers who are listening to this particular video or podcast yeah uh, you know we uh, it's very important you know I, what you said you know i i want to say start off with the quote the quote is uh, if you don't know where you're going uh, it doesn't matter whichever road you take So that's the first step to goal setting, because if you are if you are moving towards Delhi, then you should take the road that takes you to Delhi. So which means you know it could be the beginning of a career, or it could be during the mid point of one's career, or it could be a start of a financial year. It could be a start of uh, H two, you know, October to March. It could be anything, you know, or it could be a career progression planning for one's career. So have goals. It has to it has to tell you what will I achieve. How will I achieve, and when will I achieve? In a very simply put format, this is the way I would measure, and it has to be uh, the SMART goal, you know, which is based on the SMART acronym that you know, all of us know, which is your specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and also timely. What is more important to my mind is, uh, while all of this is done, it's it's important that 
uh, what, where I see of, of labor, I work with a lot of youngsters, you know, people get uh, a, a little flabbergasted and say, no, it's not possible. Halfway through, they say, no, I give up. So I would say, you know, chunk it down into small pieces. You know, when I, I remember when I started this organization, I said, what would be the f- uh, first 120 days I would do? 121 to 239 and 240 to 360. So I broke it down and said, well, how many clients will I acquire? Who all will be my clients? What will be my, my differentiator? And within what time frame, what client will I have? There is no number pressure. There's nothing called, uh, you know, uh, saying that I will achieve X number of clients. The process is more important because if you follow the process, maybe today, may not be today, but you will, you are ought to get results. So one is goal setting is important for using the fund. What uh, problem? Two is having a small, by cutting down or chunking down into small bite size uh, days, uh, you know, wise, you know, like micro learning, uh, 90 seconds, 120 seconds, like that. Similarly, you know, you need to have 90, 120 plan. And then, you know, have a milestone and say, yeah, by, by the time of the 100th day, I will achieve this by so and so. Now, you need to take a stop of the situation, even take a deep breath and say, okay, have you done well? Yeah, if you're done well. Uh, I think it's time to open a champagne and celebrate. If you haven't done well, I think it's also important for a nanosecond to go back and celebrate because what is right to celebration. If you've not done well, then go back and uh, say that okay, let me understand where have I faltered? At what stage of my journey have I not done? Is it intrinsic or is it extrinsic? Is extrinsic within my control or beyond my control? Where have I gone? Uh, made a mistake? How can I correct it? How do I go about and correct the situation so that I'm able to leverage these results uh, better in times to come. What is the key learning? What are the two key takeaways that I can have from you? And what is the action plan that I will put so that next time I don't, when I do a milestone journey review for myself, I don't come back and be part of the reasons. So, you know, uh, I should be part of results. So what will I stop doing? What will I start doing? And what will I continue doing? I think uh, that critical component of self-evaluation and uh, doing a review uh, for oneself is is uh, extremely critical because that to my mind is a goal setting because today's generation uh, especially the millennials do not like to come under a review you know they don't like the supervisor doing review and and in a very structured manner because they feel that they know you know and and and, and let's give it to them they are smart they are very fast their ram is much better than our our rams you know and uh, they, they're quicker they, they are privy to a lot of knowledge and uh, through Google and other things, they are quick learners. So uh, give it to them that they want. I, I think if you outline their boundary and tell them in a manner that they like to, uh, I would use words like, you know, may I recommend or may I suggest as you do better. You know, I think these are phrases which is more welcoming, puts less pressure rather than being monocular. So those are my, my takeaways on uh, goal setting. Very from a pragmatic view and say, if I went to do a session today, Mithil, this is what I would do, you know, rather than go by PPDs and, and go do it from the heart and say it the way they like to be told. So that's the way I would put it. True, absolutely, sir. Thank you so much for sharing this tip, sir. Uh, one more thing I would like to know, sir, that uh, see, everyone tries to sell something or the other, whether they are benefited by it or they are not. Whether if I ask you, if I come to Chennai and if I ask you, which is the best restaurant, you're going to tell me that, okay, we can go over here and we can have a lunch or a dinner over here or which is the best place where you get uh, good clothes or some good market or some good uh, office or some good shop. So everybody tries to sell something or the other. But then if it is done with the process that you shared and with the goal setting that you uh, just now shared with us. So, uh, sir, why everyone needs to ha- learn sales because sales is an important factor. So why everybody wants to learn sales in the right way? Yeah. Uh, uh... But which your department that you belong to? One to my mind, I know I always believe that job rotation is the best thing to happen. Even if you're working in operations or you're working in another department, a short stint, it could be one year, two years to get into sales, you know, it's not a bad idea. You know, if you recall my earlier conversation, I was all through a service guy, you know, taking care of my guests at the front desk and being in the restaurant. But from there, I moved to hardcore sales. It was a very tough decision to take, but then I consciously moved because I always wanted to be in control and do things which will enable and which will nourish my heart. And, and that's where I am saying, uh, you know, because who who's a salesman? Let's give it to him. Salesperson is the only person who brings revenue to the company. Everybody else is a spender. 
okay we may put a budget to spend we can call it a cow opex capex or whatever that you may call but they are all for a spends who brings revenue of the sales person and if you don't know who's what it takes to bring revenue to the company one uh, from two angles i look at it one you know it also gives you a uh, happiness that that i have learned it and i am going i am going to contribute two there are several uh, let's say let's take insurance for example uh, if you're not part of sales you know to retain your customers you know to have uh, persistent customers you will not understand you know what it takes to to, to sell and to uh, have retain your customers better for a longer term uh, you know it's important to understand sales and why they sold or how they sold and what are the right way of selling so that when the customer comes in for any cancellation or surrender or any sort you are able to put a wear on wear the hat of a sales guy and say that look here this is why you have taken and there is a purpose and for your daughter's wedding or it will be your payment and in so that i would stay put and then don't worry about uh, the volatility you know uh, covid will pass away and like the way we passed away uh, subprime we have gone through gst uh, you know demonetization you have seen enough and more of that and some more will is to come mr customer so no worry we are with you and you stay put because you have a financial goal even to preserve a sale apart from getting a sale i would say even for operations it's important to understand the sales part of it and the importance of sales of or of acquiring a sale that's how i i look at it thank you so much sir for sharing this valuable thing because i think yes i totally resonate with what you're trying to say because yes everybody should learn sales and uh, as rightly said by you uh, this particular thing had never been with me uh, or i never saw it in this way that it is only the sales guy who brings the revenue rest all the spenders amazing sir yes. thank you so much for sharing that yeah. so sir uh, we come to the end of this uh, episode and uh, i would like to thank you sir for being a part of this show and uh, blessing us into uh, this show by your presence so before we end the show would you like to say something to our viewers Yeah, Mathil. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Maxinus, you uh, know, training and business consulting is actually that is bestowed on us, and we thank you, uh, you know, for being a wonderful host on the show. They're asking the right set of questions, and I like the depth at which uh, you know uh, you are. Uh, you, you did ask about that. So, uh, you know, as I look at it, Mathil, uh, uh, so what you're doing is uh, is is very noble, but and a very noble uh, act as well in terms of helping. in entrepreneurs like this to move up the career i would strongly recommend uh, you know that many entrepreneurs should walk this path because india does not need a 15000 crore company what uh, you know what india needs is 15000 entrepreneurs who can do a one or two crore turnover because they in turn can give, create direct employment and indirect employment thereby several billions of people can get employed and we, we can become an inspiration to so that is my summation and one of the root is the technology root which means over social media this video can be seen by several uh, youngsters our people of our age or collectively and we can come together network we can join in there are several goodies that comes along with this and also the born home feeling of you know covid uh, torrid time you know how positive somebody else can be so it can be even uh, you know passing off or rubbing off the positivity to someone else these are the biggest positives that i i see and i would i would recommend you know uh, you know uh, probably our uh, our capabilities so uh, more and more we should connect up and inject that positivity like how government injects stimulus i think this positive stimulus has to go on uh, you know from your end and uh, we once again thank you for the great opportunity and look forward to teaming up with you quite often thank you absolutely sir so uh all the people who are watching this video on youtube you can subscribe to my channel and all the people who are listening as a podcast you can subscribe to my podcast on google podcast or anchor and uh, we have dev sir over here and if you want to follow him you can check out all the links which are available in the description you can follow him on linkedin and also the company's profiles are available on all the social medias so you were listening to the digital maddy show with your host mithil dave with our guest dev sir thank you so much sir for having on our show once again thank you good luck and god bless thank you